Hey everyone, it's Jordan from Fish Keeping Made Easy and today I'm back with another aquarium video. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the differences between caring for a pea puffer and an Amazon puffer. Now this might seem quite specific, but this question of should I get an Amazon puffer or should I get a pea puffer is one I'm asked pretty regularly. Quick disclaimer, this is not a full care guide for each fish, but I do have a complete care guide on both fish which I'll link below. So let's get into it. Should you get an Amazon puffer or a pea puffer? First of all, it depends on what size of tank you have and if any, what fish or inverts you have in there. Both of these species are small, full freshwater puffer fish, making them very alluring to fish keepers of all levels. So Amazon puffers are much larger than pea puffers, grown to around 3 inches or 8 centimetres. They are extremely active and, although still small fish, require a large amount of space to swim around in. It is recommended keeping them in around 200 litres or 55 gallons, but you can keep them in anything just over 100 litres or 30-ish gallons. They also need to be kept in groups, and it is recommended keeping them in groups of at least three. I've had groups of both five and three, and both groups did pretty well. I have read conflicting information regarding keeping a lone Amazon puffer and not having experienced this myself, I can't really comment or advise. Amazon puffers also require a lot of plants and decor in the tank to hide and swim around. They're also prone to glass surfing and trust me, this doesn't completely stop but does slowly die down over the years. This seems to be an aspect that people are aware of but spend the whole time worrying about. So if you think this is going to cause concern to you, I would pass on these puffers. The pea puffer on the other hand is much smaller, coming in at around 1 inch or 2.5 centimetres. They're a lot more docile in terms of swimming and can be kept in much smaller aquariums. 10 gallons or 40 litres is a minimum for a single specimen, but the bigger the better as they can be messy eaters. Although a lot of reports online suggest you can't keep pea puffers together or with other fish, I would disagree. I've kept pea puffers in multiple groups of 5 or 6 and with other fish. Now, they can be territorial, so if you have a pea puffer in a tank by itself and it's been there for a while and you try to add another puffer fish or another fish, it will act aggressive towards this fish. So really, ensure the tank is large enough and that you forward plan for getting a pea puffer, considering these aspects. So what about feeding? Now, Amazon puffers do have teeth or beaks that will require you to trim them. They say feeding them hard-shelled foods will stop you having to trim their teeth, but in my experience, this isn't correct. Amazon puffers don't have large powerful beaks like some other large freshwater puffers such as Mabu puffers. They simply don't have the power to bite through shells. Yes, gnawing on shells or crunching snail shells will help with this, but it will only delay the inevitable. However, I've only had to trim my puffer's teeth twice in the three and a half years that I've had them. I also have a video of us trimming the teeth. Pea puffers have small teeth or beaks, but they don't require trimming as they don't continually grow. They still enjoy eating snails, but it's not a requirement to feed them. They unfortunately can be prone to only eating bloodworms, so give them a variety of foods when you first get them, things such as mosquito larvae, mice shrimp, and any other frozen foods really. This goes for Amazon puffers too. Both pea puffers and Amazon puffers will also likely not accept any flake or pelleted foods. So what about tank mates? As stated previously, both fish can successfully be community fish in the right tank. Amazon puffers do nip slow moving fish such as coris and plex, and anything with long flowing fins, so keep that in mind. The pea puffer will also likely do the same, but also ensure any tank mates cannot fit the pea puffer in their mouths or they will become like skittles for larger fish. So, can you keep these two puffer species together? Well, technically you could, as they do have similar temperature ranges and the Amazon puffer can live in a wide range in pH between 6 and 8. This is due to them being found in many different parts of the Amazon basin. You would also need to ensure the flow in the tank wasn't too heavy for the pea puffer. I have seen people successfully keeping them together, but I would recommend keeping one species first to get experience with them. Each puffer, both Amazon and pea puffer, can have different personalities. Some are timid, some are aggressive, and some are really inquisitive. You don't really know what you're getting until you put the fish into the tank. Unfortunately, both fish have issues with parasites as the majority of pea puffers are wild caught and all Amazon puffers are wild caught. I would recommend quarantining each fish and treating them before putting them in the tank. Your local fish shop can advise you on what medication to use. When selecting a puffer, ensure they're not skinny as once they kind of reach this point, they rarely recover. So, all aspects considered, what puffer fish should you get? Personally, I think if you've never had a puffer fish before, then the pea puffer is a great introduction to the puffer species and require a lot less care, space and are a lot less demanding than the Amazon puffer. But if you have a larger tank and are willing to trim the Amazon puffer's beak, then by all means go for the Amazon puffer. I've enjoyed keeping mine and after a while you stop stressing about them as much and they become like any other fish. In fact, I've found mine to be way less hassle than a lot of other fish I've kept. 
So as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.